Since the time I first started to learn the basics of photography through the span of a couple college courses, I have been shooting only in digital. But that's about to change today as I try my hand at film photography for the first time. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony. So up until this point, I have been consistent with shooting only in digital photography. And the reason for that, and I'm pretty sure most of you will agree with this, is that basically it's just convenient. You know, to be able to take as many photos when you want, where you want, be able to immediately look at them afterwards and edit them, it's just a convenient process. That's just how it is now. We live in a digital age where everything is fast, convenient, and quick. But there's something about film photography that has always made me want to try it. How it forces you to slow down and really pick your shots carefully, needing to have the right exposure settings set constantly, and also not being able to immediately see what you shoot. All of that, I feel personally, is way more challenging than just taking a picture on a cell phone or a digital camera. And it's those kinds of things that make me want to challenge myself as a photographer. In case you haven't caught on, that's the reason I made this channel. At the time of filming this, I believe I only have about 10 subscribers, which that could grow. It cannot. <laughs> I hope it does grow. But yeah, that's the reason why I made this channel, to force myself to grow and learn through photography. So right off the bat, I want to tell you guys I am by no means no expert. But I would definitely say that I'm still learning and trying to perfect my skill, which is this craft of photography that I have just enjoyed so much. So what I'm hoping you viewers will get from watching my videos is just a sense of pure inspiration. I hope most of you have an interest in photography, or if you just like to look at my face, that's cool by me too. But no, seriously, I created this channel to force myself to grow and learn through photography, and hopefully to give you guys a sense of inspiration. So if I can do it, you can do it as well. And so yeah, with all that out of the way, this is my dad's old 35mm SLR film camera, the Pentax K1000. I've had this in my possession for some time, but now I think I'm ready to really try it out and try some film photography. As you can see, this thing is by no means brand new. There is a lot of dust and buildup on it, which I do predict will kind of have an impact on my photos, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, otherwise it does seem to be still in working condition. The shutter still works and so does the light meter inside since I just replaced the battery. But I do have one major problem. I need a film. So I've researched online and because I am a total beginner with film photography, I want to get a relatively low cost film stock just in case I do screw things up. So I looked around and I do see that Walmart does carry a low cost Fuji film stock. So what I'll do now is I'll drive down to Walmart and see if I can get my hands on some of this Fuji film stock. Alright guys, so it is the next day and I am happy to report I did manage to find some 35mm film. Had to drive all the way to a Walmart in Pomona just to get it. so. I am happy I found it. I did call my local camera shop and the guy there did say that there's some kind of film shortage going on. So at the time of filming this, it's early February and everywhere I looked online, even Amazon, uh, everything as far as 35 millimeter film does seem to be on back order. So I am really happy I did manage to find this one. So I did go with the Fujifilm Superior Extra 400 speed film. It was about $20 for a three pack, so a relatively low price. And I'm gonna go ahead and load this into my camera. And then I'm gonna go out and shoot some pictures. I'm thinking about going to a spot in Fullerton where I did my undergrad at, so I'll see what I can find there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and load this film to my camera and let's go. stomping grounds, Fullerton, California. Right now I'm currently on the roof of a parking structure getting the eagle eye view of the city. So yeah, I'm gonna shoot some film photography with the Pentax K1000. My first time shooting film photography, so I'm gonna look around, find some spots, and shoot some pictures.
right, so one thing I noticed right off the bat is how much longer it takes me to set up my aperture on this manual lens. So on digital autofocus, you know, really quick and everything, but with this one, you gotta manually focus it. And you gotta actually set the V, your shutter speed and aperture manually. And it's a longer setup to take. So composition, much longer with film photography. All right, so I think I got a lot of cool shots here in downtown Fullerton, but there is a park I want to head up to that has a pretty cool fountain. So I'm gonna drive up to that now and take some pictures up there. So stay with me. Okay, so I'm on frame 30, which means I have about six more shots left. So let's make the next few shots count.
Okay guys, so I just got finished with this roll of film in the Pentax K1000. So my next step is going to be actually finding a place to uh, develop these. But for right now, I got no more shots left, so time to wrap this up and go home. Alright YouTube, so I am back and like I've been doing at the end of these vlogs, I'm going to take a moment to give my general input, my overall thoughts on this whole experience in this instance with shooting analog film photography for the first time. And I do have a lot to say because uh, man, this was an experience for sure. So first things first, the big question, did I enjoy shooting film? Uh, short answer, heck yes. You know, there really is something about the physicality of shooting film that is such a contrast to shooting digital. You have to follow all these steps, these uh, prerequisites, right? Just to be able to take the picture. So one, you gotta load your film, set your ISO, then you still have to dial in your settings, your aperture and your shutter speed. And in this instance, manual focus because everything on the K1000 is mechanical except for the light meter inside. As compared to shooting with my Canon RP, for example, you still have to dial in your settings if you're shooting in manual, but for the most part, all you gotta do is flip it on and it's a point and shoot. And that's how it is with every digital camera today, right? All you have to do is turn it on and basically just start shooting pictures. In today's sense, everyone's a photographer, right? Because of these little things we carry 24 seven that allow us to take a picture whenever we want. Pretty much everyone these days has a smartphone camera or they know how to work a DSLR. But when it comes to film cameras, you can assume that most younger people wouldn't know how to use one, at least right away. So in a way, I think that kind of humbles you. It makes you think back to learning those basics of photography, those founding principles with the exposure triangle and such. You know, you're actually creating the image you see. Because light is physically burning, imprinting onto the film during that quick moment the shutter is released. The picture is actually there. And these days when we snap a digital picture, you know, we're seeing it through pixels. We're seeing it after it's been manipulated and rendered by the software. With this, you're always getting a real-time image because it's only a mirror and lens that reflects back what you see. So I thought that was actually really refreshing for me because I actually had to take those moments in the street to compose with my eye and think about how the picture was going to come out first rather than looking at a digital screen or a digital viewfinder. So why has film photography been gaining a lot of popularity lately? Because we're in a digital age, right? So why has film not died out completely? So the number one main reason I think why photographers are shooting film is gotta be the aesthetic, right? You know, there's this quality to film photographs that when you really look at them, you can tell that they were shot with film. There's grain in the image and there can sometimes be this imperfect touch to a film photo, a certain characteristic or uniqueness. So far, Fuji Superior 400 is the only film stock I've used, and as many I still want to try, but immediately I noticed there's this warmer tone to it. The photos I took weren't super sharp, but instead rather soft. And that has always been a gripe that I've always had with digital photography because sometimes when I take a digital photo and I edit it in Lightroom, it can look over sharpened. Even when you look at Instagram, Lightroom, and other photo editing apps, you will always see this urge to replicate that film look. There's all these different filters that add that film aesthetic, uh, with grain and grit. So there's no denying that people have been digitally trying to recreate that film look for some time now. Maybe not so much for me personally, but as someone who was born mid 90s and grew up in the early 2000s, I can still remember uh, the time when film was still popular and looking around Walmart and seeing Fuji film and other film stocks in stock and even those Kodak point and shoot disposables. And I can even still remember my mom using the point and shoot disposable at family events and trips and dropping it off at Walgreens to get it developed. So as someone who grew up during that transition period from film to digital, I can still say that I have memories of both, but way more so with the digital, especially during middle school when flip phones were becoming popular and high school when Apple was taking over with the iPhone. You know, I can still remember my buddy in high school when he got the uh, iPod Nano with a camera built in and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever because you had your camera and your music all in one place, so that was like really cool. But overall, the reason I think why photographers my age and even younger are transitioning to film is because it's a whole new medium that we never got to really experience. The format for us, at least, is refreshing and new when compared to shooting digital. But as great as I'm saying it is, there are obviously some major drawbacks that come when shooting film that I've now personally experienced firsthand. First thing that had happened to me right away is Right now, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of film going around. I think film is in very high demand right now, which makes it pretty hard to actually find some film stocks. Like I said earlier, I had to drive out to Walmart about 30 miles away from me just to get one box of Fujifilm 
400 because that was all they had. And when I called up my local camera shop, the guy there who I believe runs it uh, told me that there's some kind of film shortage going on right now. I don't know when or if this issue will resolve soon, but uh, I definitely can say I think I got into film pretty late. Because what I'm seeing online right now as far as film, uh, shopping for it, everything is pretty much on back order or it's about double or triple in price. And that helps me transition to the next drawback of shooting film, which is the cost. So you have the price of film itself and the price to get it developed. Even if you try to develop film at home, which I haven't tried yet, but I know you have to buy a lot of chemicals and a scanner, which costs money. I ended up getting this roll of film developed through that local camera shop I told you earlier about, and it cost me about $18. So at first, that doesn't seem like a lot, but over time, if I were to keep shooting with film, that's gonna keep adding up $18 per roll. So when you shoot film, you gotta think about it this way. Each shot costs money, so you really have to be sure about the picture before you press that shutter down. And that leads to the next setback. Uh, you're very limited on your shots. 36 exposures, you know, that's all you get, at least with this roll of Fujifilm. However, this could be easily argued as a good thing because when you know you're limited, you take more time to slow down and look around you before you actually take the picture. So I think that keeps you more focused and present in that moment when you're taking the picture, which in turn maybe leads to better photographs. And lastly, film is such a tangible product, right? There's so many things that can go wrong with it. Let's say you accidentally pop open the back of the camera, then that section of film is exposed and you can't use it no more. Film can also expire, which can cause some quality issues with your photographs. And as I learned firsthand the hard way, uh, if you lose a roll of film, those pictures are gone for good. So a little secret, um, this is actually my second attempt at trying this video. And the reason it took me so long to finish this video is because the first attempt, I sent that roll of film to a lab and they lost it. I don't know if it was the mail's fault or the lab's, but the uh, tracking did say delivered to their PO box and they were giving me stuff about how they couldn't find it or locate it. So after a lot of emails back and forth over the span of a month, uh, just got my refund back and I never got to see that roll of film. So I had to redo taking pictures in Fullerton, so that roll was actually my second roll of film that I used. So that's the other drawback of shooting film, you know, you can't immediately see your pictures right away, and it really tests your patience because you gotta wait till it gets developed. But overall, I think the payoff is rewarding, you know, patience is key. So will I be switching to film full time? I'm gonna say no because shooting with digital is just more efficient, at least for me personally, but I do see myself shooting film more often. And I've already bought a new box of film, a uh, Fuji 200, that I will be using on future videos. And alright guys, so those are my thoughts on my first experience with shooting film. Sorry if it was a little long-winded, but hopefully in turn it will help you guys if you're planning to shoot film anytime soon. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Have you used the K1000? What do you think of film photography? Is it overrated or just generally better for photography? Please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, this video took me over a month to finish, so please subscribe. I do have a lot more videos planned, including shooting with my other hand-me-down camera, the Canon AE-1 program. So like and subscribe if you look forward to seeing that video. And with all that said, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all in my next video.